All right, another week in the books, and this weekly recap is going to be a little bit longer than the usual ones, only because in this case, I've decided to include a clip of all of my accessory work from each day. So you'll see exactly every exercise I do throughout the course of the week. Now, just a reminder, however, usually what I'm showing you is either my top set or my last set. So in some instances, Later on in the week when I have, let's say, six sets of four listed, you might only be seeing the top set for that particular exercise, and I might have done more, I might have done less. Now, one of the reasons I don't like to show my accessory work, as you guys will probably notice, is it's not that exciting. A lot of times for me, it might even just be body weight work or just kind of going through the motions as the RPEs are supposed to be fairly low. And it gets kind of boring because my philosophy on accessory work is I just try to add some weight each week or just do something to kind of get moving a little bit. And I think you'll see that in some of the body weight exercises I do. It's nothing impressive, obviously, being body weight exercises, but for me, it's still kind of difficult because I'm not used to doing some of these unilateral movements. And over time, I'll probably add weight to them, but really it's helped in my recovery and just feeling better overall uh, because it helps me get a little bit looser. Um, and if you guys ever are really interested in seeing everything that I do, and not in video format, of course, do always link my account on Fitocracy, which is the site and the app I use to track all my training. So it has everything in there, and I'll usually throw my opinions on what the RPEs were for the top and last set as well. It's not as exciting as seeing me train because you can't see these amazing outfits I'm wearing, but at least you'll get some insight into my normal training week. So that being said, about this training week, it was a fairly difficult one overall, and I think there's a lot of factors that contributed to that. Um, the first of which is the 4th of July fell on a Tuesday of this week. I still got all of my training in, uh, but that being said, 4th of July is usually a pretty fun holiday here in the United States, and by fun, I mean there's a lot of food, there's a lot of drinking, and usually a lot of time outside, all of which tends to drain me of my energy a little bit. So I got really tired and really tried to prioritize going out and having fun and to add on that my wife had the whole week off of work so I wanted to make sure that even though I was working most of the week that I was able to spend some time with her and friends and family and whatnot which means a lot of these training videos you're seeing right now were done really early in the morning for me typically I like to train during my lunch break but in these instances I pretty much just woke up and trained right away which didn't necessarily feel real good on my stomach considering I did try to eat some breakfast right before and didn't really give myself time to digest. So a lot of these were, I was feeling pretty shitty, no pun intended. Um, and I really tried to rush through these. So as normal, if you guys tuned into my Instagram live story on Monday, I actually um, streamed my first day of training and you could tell I was out of breath between each set. And that's usually pretty typical. And my philosophy on time between sets is typically just take as long as I need, which for me on some of these heavier movements tends to be about three to five minutes in some instances. I'll usually let like a song play because I always have music going uh, completely from start to finish before I start my next set or until I catch my breath. So because I had other stuff on my mind, I wanted to get out and get out of the house and meet up with friends and family at the pool or slip and slide parties that I went to this week. Um, I really tried to push my training in where on average, my training probably takes two hours to maybe even two and a half, depending on literally how much time I take. Uh, these sessions were all done usually within an hour to an hour and a half for the most part. Now this Thursday workout day three was really tough for me, especially when I take a look at how my squats went on Monday. I feel like I was getting a lot better movement in my hips and getting wider. That being said here, getting a top set of 225 for five reps at probably like an RPE eight uh, was good because I haven't squatted this heavy really since the meet, so it felt good to go ahead and get that done. Um, bench has always been feeling pretty good. One of the things that I've actually been noticing though is my chest has been getting a little bit sore, which I'm not used to, uh, but I'm glad that that's the case because it means that we're bumping up the weight um, in each actual day that we're benching. In the past, even though I'm still benching four times per week, uh, some of those days were really fairly light, whereas now it seems to be like the weight's usually around the same with the exception of Friday where we're allowed to push it a little bit as we're finally working some of this RPE back in. Uh, taking a look here at some of the face pulls, this is one of the accessory movements I do. I finally found a use for this spud ink pulley. I actually got like a carabiner attachment as you can see to that cross member. What this allows me to do is get that pulley a little bit higher than it would be if I used the strap that came with it. Uh, and I've gotten a lot more use out of this thing since I've been able to do so. Uh, I also did some ab movements here, which is just some sit-ups, body weight. Uh, I do have a little bit of rock here, I don't really care I, for this. 
it's not something that's a main concern of mine, but I do just wanna feel it in my abs and this exercise allows me to do that. Uh, ideally, if my rack was higher and my legs weren't as long, I'd probably do some hanging leg raises or something of that nature, uh, but this seems to do the trick. So that brings us to the last and final day. Thank God, because this is a week that kicked my ass. Uh, top set here, actually two top sets at 240. I'm only gonna show you one, about 530 pounds. Uh, these move pretty good, I thought. And despite the fact that this week was very tough, uh, it was very rewarding in the fact that I was able to get all my work done and I really didn't feel too beat up after any particular session, although I was definitely dying during most of these. Top set of bench for the week was a set of four at 132 and a half. Uh, this was actually a misload on my part. It called for an RPE eight and watching it now, it looked about accurate. Um, but the set before this I had at 122 and a half and I had meant to only jump five kilos, but because I have that American meathead math going, I accidentally put on five kilos each side instead, which bumped it up to 132. Uh, one of the other accessory movements that I really like and it really uses these straps, which I'll probably do a video on at some point or another, is these kind of bent over row, pendlay row hybrid. So I'm using the straps really to take the momentum out, uh, but using a different starting position than a normal pendlay row, I like these a lot. And of course, to finish out the week, probably one of the most laughable exercises, but I feel like these have been really helping my recovery afterwards, really kind of just lets my hips and my legs get a little bit loose. And that'll end it, and I'll talk to you guys next week.